Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to another episode of Transcending Mental Health. And if you're listening to me on Spreaker or YouTube or another ep- another uh, podcast on Spotify, welcome to Transcending Mental Social Issues. Um, I'm Sarah Lee, and let me make sure I'm recording on all my devices here. I'm recording on... Okay, I'm not, I don't have my recorder turned on for, uh, okay, I've got my recorder turned on for, uh, Spotify for podcasters. Okay, so I have three podcasts and I'm kind of doing them simultaneously right now and I hope my internet doesn't go out. Sometimes my internet goes out while I'm recording and sometimes I get paranoid. I don't know if someone's using a jamming device to sabotage my work. You know, I, I sometimes you know, make assumptions like a conspiracy theorist or something, but you just never know in the age of computers. People like to mess around with each other all the time, or maybe everything's all right. Okay, um, I had some trouble making uh, episodes for the past two days because I've been sick again. Um, I thought maybe I had long COVID. I still wonder if I do, but I did see the doctor today. <clears throat> the same people that came over to visit me last, last March... Um, came over to see me last night and um, they said the cough was from my sinuses acting up again there is fluid stagnating in my sinuses I know that sounds disgusting but they looked in my ears and down my throat and in my mouth and they think they think I've got like fluid in there and they prescribed steroids and I can't get them yet because the pharmacy was closed yesterday, which was Sunday. So I, ironically, I tried to make an attempt to get it done faster at a 24-hour place, and they're not going to have it ready for me until tomorrow afternoon. So um, I called them and told them to please make it a little more snappy because I need the medication. I really need it. And I told them I would call the provider again if they didn't do it, if they didn't get it on the double. At the same time, I tried to be respectful. Excuse my uh, sharp noises. This cough is really nasty. There is stuff going down my throat. Fortunately, it's not in my lungs, and I haven't quite lost my voice this time. Um, my, my current haunt right now is the Kent State shootings. Um, that is what founded our wonderful rock band, Devo. Um... I am not grateful or glad whatsoever that some that four people died and nine people were wounded in that shooting. I am not glad that happened at all. I am not glad that Jerry Casale, a member of Devo, was traumatized by that event. And I have no doubt that he's he's traumatized every year. I think every year he he relives it and God knows when else he relives it. He might even relive it during 9/11 because that was another violent act. And um, regardless what side we're on with the government, ladies and gentlemen, it was a traumatic act. It was just a really, uh, any kind of violence is traumatic. I don't care who's to blame right now at this point. Our world has got to heal. And um, if I'm only one person that's going to heal herself or heal themselves, so be it. Um, But I'm trying and um, not to mention I got diagnosed with a, a dreadful uh, disorder that people can't stand. They don't like border. No one likes borderlines. No one likes uh, narcissists. And I might have even self-diagnosed myself as a self-aware narcissist last week. Um, don't ask me why, but I might have some traits. And um, I think that it, it might take some traits to be able to make podcasts because we have to have some kind of a sense of ego as long as we don't use it to excess. So that's sort of the thoughts that have been going through my mind. And by the way, anything that I make on on these podcasts are my opinion, are what's on my mind. They are not to be written in stone, especially my, uh, my belief systems that I have been developing as of late since August 6th when I when I inadvertently, unknowingly turned to Jesus. 
I got tired of feeling like I was surrounded on all sides by, uh, by disregard for respect for humanity. And it was manifested in uh, being invited to uh, colorful parties and live streams. And I'm not going to even uh, go into what I mean by that. You guys figure it out. And um, I have the same feeling that um, Jerry Casale probably had when he witnessed those acts of violence at Kent State. What happened was on May 4th, 1970, or in the 1970s, forgive me if I have the year wrong, I probably don't because it's been confirmed a couple of, couple of places that it was in 1970, uh, Kent State University. Jerry Casale was, I believe, attending college there, I think. Or maybe, no, he, he wasn't attending. I think he might have been a, a teacher or something. Well, I don't care. I don't care. He was in the middle of it. Whether he was a teacher or a student, I'm not too clear. He might. I think he was a teacher. I think Mark Mothersbaugh, his co-member of Devo, was a student. Might have been an art student. And um, <clears throat> Casale was... In the, in the thick of it, he witnessed it with his eyes. He witnessed it with his heart. He witnessed it with his brain. He witnessed it with his, his living spirit. And the good news is he was able to and willing to, although very, dis and very disgusted, very upset, transcend what happened. He didn't bring back Allison's life or Jeffrey's life. He didn't uh, heal the wounded. And he didn't uh, become what he was before what happened to him. But he was able to form a band. He was able to make art and form a band called Devo. And he was able to deliver a message to the world to pay attention. And that has been haunting me every May 4th and even times in between. That has been haunting me, especially since uh, I got curious about how Devo was founded. It started out in me, it started out as some intrigue with the band Devo, some like of the music, some intrigue and some appreciation for the, the differentness, you know, the, uh, the message, the social consciousness that I was interpreting. Uh, my roommate... Bruce uh, introduced me to them when he was 37 and when I was uh, 16, 15. And we used to drive around in his car and listen to uh, Devo. And um, the first song I heard by Devo was Whip It in the 80s. I was 13. And um, at first I thought the music sounded really strange and I didn't really care for it. But uh, I got, I guess I got, I guess it grew on me. And um, I started liking uh, what was called New Wave, which I think is now Alternative Rock. <coughs> but I'm always, when I get really intrigued and really liking of a band, I get curious about how they were formed. And when I found out that, um, when I found out about this Kent State thing, I don't know, something something happened to me, and I felt... A kindred spirit. I found a kindred spirit in Jerry. You know, no matter what he believes in, no matter what I believe in, I felt a kindred spirit or a kindred soul or something. And I thought, geez, you know, I've been through a lot in my life. I've had a lot of things happen to me, and I've seen things happen around me that were pretty gruesome. And um, I had my own. I have my own story, my own trauma which I won't go into because I don't want to re-traumatize myself or anyone else right now. But um, I want to say that although, my message is, I want to say that although we can't bring life, the life back that we lost, the lives back that we lost here on this planet, and although we cannot take back the things that happened and we can't make them go away, we can transcend them, and that's how I ended up doing my uh, mental wellness process. I took my mental wellness process because I got I got virtually dogged out of the mental health system, which I didn't even like in the first place. They weren't really helping me deal with my problems. 
Um, I was in a place where I wasn't sure I even understood what they were talking about lots of times because the pain was so bad. And in other episodes, I mentioned that um, I was manifesting a lot of messiness around me and slovenliness around me and other other factors because I was really, really in so much pain. It's like picture a mental illness and emotional upset, upset being like a really severe injury that, that puts you in, in pain like, like to a 10 on the Richter scale of pain. And you just can't, you can't function. Of course, you're not going to feel it cleaning up your room or grooming yourself or um, washing up or being friendly or having social skills when you're feeling that way all the time. And I was having the psychological, spiritual, neurological equivalent of that kind of pain. I really was. I'll speak for myself as a life experience, you guys. That's one of my modules. And I don't know. I don't. It would be insulting to Jerry Casale if I assumed what he felt. That's his story. But I feel resonant of him right now. I feel resonant of that whole band. And I guess maybe I've got a secret dream of. I wish I could I could connect with him. I think he subscribed to one of my channels on Instagram and then unsubscribed again. <clears throat> Maybe he wasn't interested in, in most of the other stuff I was uh, doing. But I made a uh, I made a video about peace. And um, Gerald, if you if you are listening, if if heaven heaven who you are listening right now, I'm not on that channel anymore on Instagram. Um, I'm on a new channel, and it's called well, Wellbeing Serol. Wellbeing Serol, it's one word, and Serol is spelled C-E-R-O-L. And um, I still make videos about mental wellness and social stuff. And yes, I still talk about Jesus. I talk about some religious stuff, but it's the way I interpret it. And um, it's very radicalized, radical and modified to my opinion and the way the way I experienced um, my you know spiritual spirituality um, <clears throat> I believe that many of Jesus's followers may not understand or follow Jesus the way Jesus really wanted to be followed and I want to I want to follow him or follow use him as one example in the world of peace and love and support and abhorrence of viol un, you know needless and untimely violence and death um, I believe that he was crucified because um, he was crucified because he didn't like thing bad things happening he didn't like people suffering and I'm sure if he had he had been there at Kent State he would have hated it. He would have felt the same way that he felt when uh, the money changers were in the temples, you know, messing around with the the money, you know, and the, you know, taking over the temple and all that. I don't think Jesus would have approved of what happened to me either when I was abused or the things that happened to Bruce, too, my, my friend Bruce or anyone, anyone we care about or, you know, or ourselves. So, um, <clears throat> I don't believe in Jesus the way um, many people that call themselves Christians do. And I don't even know if I can call myself a Christian, but I can call myself somebody with an IQ and I spell it I-C-U-E, and it's on one of my other episodes if you want to listen. But this Kent State thing haunts me every May 4th and times in between, just as it might to Jerry. I wanted to talk about that. That's one of the ways I take away its power, talking about it. Be safe, everyone, please. Peace out.